They turned it off. Not the lights, not the machines, but the voice, the one that usually tells us what's happening out there. On the week three I Atlas brushed past Mars, NASA went silent. Websites froze. Feeds stopped updating. The signal, gone. And in that silence, something drifted through the Martian night. A visitor from beyond our sun, the third one we've ever seen and the first to cross paths with another world, while the world itself wasn't watching. People noticed, because silence is never just silence when it comes from the sky. It was supposed to be the moment of truth, the closest approach of 3 I Atlas, the perfect window for images, data, proof. But right when the object entered the frame, the feed went dark. Government shutdown, they said. It's been drifting for eons, long before Mars had rivers, long before Earth had oceans, long before we had names for the sky. 3i Atlas didn't come in like a comet. It came on a flat trajectory, not crashing down, but slipping in, aligned, almost politely, with the plane of our planets. Most interstellar objects we found, Oumuamua, Borisov, came in hot, wild, from above or below the solar disk, but not this one. 3i Atlas behaved differently. It followed the rules. It followed our orbit. And maybe that's what made it feel wrong. When it was first spotted in July 2025, no one knew what it was. It had speed, over 60 kilometers per second. It had a coma, dense, sprawling, ghostly, but no tail. Not a real one, only an anti-tail, pointing toward the sun. Something comets almost never show unless you're looking at them from a very strange angle or unless there's something else entirely. Early estimates said it was at least five kilometers wide. That's bigger than Oumuamua, bigger than Borisov, big enough to hold its shape across the void, big enough to survive the solar wind, big enough to make us wonder. And still, the deeper we looked, the more questions emerged. How could it be this active, this luminous, this structured, so far from the sun? Why was its coma so green? Not bluish, not yellow, but emerald, was it chemistry or something more complex? Then came the first impact, a coronal mass ejection. On September 25th, a solar storm hurled plasma toward it. And yet, no disruption, no flicker, no shift in trajectory. It just kept going, as if the sun itself couldn't touch it. By October, 3i Atlas was approaching Mars, quietly, slipping into the orbit of another world. The timing wasn't subtle. It was sharp, precise, a flyby at just 0.2 astronomical units, close enough to be seen, close enough to be felt. And for the first time in history, an interstellar object passed near another planet while we had eyes there. Orbiters, rovers, satellites on the Martian surface, all in position, all within range. And just before that moment, Earth went blind. The feeds stopped, the websites froze. The voices from NASA went quiet. But 3i Atlas did not. It kept drifting past the red planet, observed, perhaps, by machines that could no longer speak. Cameras on orbiters may have snapped it. The Perseverance rover might have caught a glimpse, a streak in the Martian night sky that didn't belong, one that didn't follow the stars. But we didn't see it. Not then, not in real time, because the moment we needed the data most, everything shut down. And maybe that's the strangest part, not the coma, not the color, not the angle of approach, but the silence, the system-wide silence, as if something passed by and the universe turned its face away, or someone made sure we wouldn't see it coming. October 1st, 2025, the new fiscal year begins in the United States and the government shuts down, budgets stall, offices close, agencies freeze. It's not the first time. It's happened before. Over politics, over numbers, over deadlines missed in cold rooms by tired men. But this time, the timing is different. Because while the system went quiet down here, something was moving out there. Just one day later, 3i Atlas would reach its closest approach to Mars. October 3rd, the window. The single best opportunity to catch it from a distance never seen before. Not from Earth, from Mars. There are satellites there, orbiters circling the red planet like silent watchers, cameras capable of capturing light from deep space, recording in multiple wavelengths, scanning the skies, and not just orbiters, rovers, 
Rovers with cameras pointed up at night, eyes in the dirt, looking at stars we can't even see from home. Everything was ready. And then, silence. NASA's website posted a banner. Due to a lapse in funding, this site is not being updated. Data feeds stopped flowing. Press releases were canceled. Social media went dark. Entire chains of communication fell into standby mode. And for the public, the sky just stopped talking. You could still see the stars, but you couldn't ask about them. What's strange is that not every part of NASA shuts down during a government freeze. Some operations continue. The ones considered critical, the ones that protect life or property or flight. But outreach, transparency, daily data for public eyes, those go dark, always. So even if the machines were still running, their voices were cut, and that's what people felt. Not just absence, but intentional absence. A sudden silence at the exact second we needed sound. Because 3i Atlas didn't wait. It never would. It passed Mars. Close enough to trigger instruments. Close enough to spark questions. Maybe it left a trail on the images. Maybe it reflected sunlight just long enough to be caught by Perseverance or by the Trace Gas Orbiter. Maybe those images already exist, somewhere, in a server, in a buffer, in a file waiting for someone to press send. But no one pressed it. Not that week. Not when it mattered. And so, the timing feels orchestrated. An object from beyond the solar system makes a near pass to Mars. An opportunity that might not happen again for decades, maybe centuries. And the only agency capable of showing us what happened goes dark. The European Space Agency kept its eyes open. So did China. So did the UAE. But their feeds don't reach us like NASAs do. Their updates don't get headlines. Their cameras don't post to public dashboards. The silence grew deeper, wider, as if the universe had staged a whisper and we missed it entirely. There's no evidence of conspiracy. Not really. The shutdown was scheduled. The flyby was orbital mechanics. But still, the coincidence lingers. And in that coincidence, a question. If something truly unexplainable passed near Mars, would we even know? Or would we only see what we're allowed to see? Because sometimes, the silence isn't accidental. Sometimes the signal isn't lost. It's cut. They didn't show us the images, but that doesn't mean there were none. In space, cameras don't sleep. The Mars Orbiters, ESAs, Mars Express, the Trace Gas Orbiter, NASAs, M-A-V-E-N. They circle the red planet endlessly, scanning its surface, watching its sky. And in early October, they were all awake, all active, all perfectly positioned to see the visitor. 3i Atlas wasn't a dot lost in the dark anymore. It was close just 29 million kilometers from Mars, a breath away, by cosmic standards, moving fast, bright, big. If any machine out there could have seen it, these could. But there's one machine that isn't in orbit. It's on the ground, Perseverance, a robot on Martian soil, equipped with a high-resolution camera system called MassCam Z. It usually looks at rocks, dust, weather, but sometimes it looks up, especially at night. On October 2nd, just hours before the closest approach, Perseverance captured a sequence of long exposure images, not part of its main mission, not aimed at Earth, just pointed at the Martian sky. And in one of those frames, something moved, a streak, faint, fast, unfamiliar, not a star. Stars leave arcing trails in these exposures, soft, curved, aligned with Mars's rotation. This wasn't like that. It was straight, sharp, at an angle that didn't match any known satellite path, too fast for a moon, too slow for cosmic rays, too deliberate for noise, it looked like a passage, a crossing, something that came, lit the sensor for a few seconds, and was gone. Was it 3i Atlas? The timing fits, the direction aligns, the speed is consistent with its trajectory, it wasn't confirmed, not officially, no press release followed, no headline, just a whisper, buried in a data set shared quietly between researchers, then posted, briefly, before disappearing from most feeds. Of course, it could have been something else, a glitch, a piece of debris, a meteor skipping across the Martian atmosphere. But even that would be worth mentioning. Only, it wasn't. 
other orbiters may have seen even more. The Mars Express was in ideal range. The Trace Gas Orbiter specializes in detecting fine particles and gases, perfect tools to observe an object trailing plasma and ice. They were operational. They were there. But if they saw something, no one said. There's talk, though. Papers in draft. Observations under embargo. Mission teams waiting for clearance. For funding. For the shutdown to end so they can speak again. But the silence persists. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency released a vague update. A single paragraph stating that observations of 3i Atlas were ongoing and promising. No images attached. No spectral data. Just a nudge. Just enough to say, we're watching, but not enough to show what they saw. Other missions, like China's Tianwen-1 and the UAE's Hope Orbiter, were also in position, but their communications are limited. Their images don't stream live. Their analysis takes weeks, months. If they saw something, the world might not know for a long time, if ever. And so, we're left with pieces, a streak on a Martian night, a paused data feed, a sentence from ESA, and a million questions. Some say, we're expecting too much. That space is hard. That data takes time. That this silence is just bureaucracy, not deception. But others remember Umuamua, how it came and went with no clear answers, how its light curve didn't make sense, how it changed direction without a tail, how we still don't know what it was. And now, 3i Atlas, larger, closer, stranger, passes by a planet filled with eyes and somehow slips through them all. No confirmation, no denial, just absence. And maybe that's the real story, not what we saw, but what we didn't. Not the images on the screen, but the frames we were never shown. Because in a universe filled with signals, silence is never neutral. It's a message in itself, a decision, a choice. And maybe this time, that choice wasn't ours. Maybe the images are there, waiting, filed away, too sensitive, too strange, too revealing, or maybe they were never saved at all. And if that's true, if we had the chance to see a traveler from beyond the stars, passing right beside another world, and we let it slip through the dark without record, then what else have we missed? What else has drifted past, unseen, unspoken, unbelieved? It passed, through the dark, across the orbit of Mars, in the narrow window between visibility and oblivion. It passed. And we didn't see it. Not clearly. Not completely. Maybe not at all. A visitor from another star system. A body that defies our definitions. Not quite a comet. Not quite an asteroid. Not quite explainable. One that came with speed, structure, and silence. And just as it reached its closest point, we stopped looking. Or we were told to stop. Or they stopped telling us. There's no final proof. No leaked image, no smoking file that confirms what 3i Atlas was, or what it wasn't. But there is something else, something heavier than data, a feeling that when it mattered most, the signal was cut. That somewhere in a control room, a choice was made, to wait, to delay, to silence. And in the void that followed, we're left only with the question, was that silence a coincidence or a warning? If there's more to see, we haven't seen it. If there's more to know, we haven't been told. And maybe we never will. But we're still watching. Still listening. Still waiting for the next object to drift in from the dark. For the next signal, they won't want us to hear. And when it comes, we'll be here. So stay with us. Subscribe. Because out there, in the space between stars, something is always moving. And silence is never just silence.